What's going on? In this video, I'm going to talk about why I purchased the original Canon EOS M in 2022. Now this right here will probably explain some of it. This is obviously not the camera itself. This is a built out video rig. And that is pretty much why I bought this camera. So I feel like probably a lot of you watching this are interested in purchasing this camera for the exact reason that I did, which is for the Magic Lantern firmware hack. Now, if that's something that you're interested in and that's the reason you're watching this, obviously stay tuned because that's why I bought this and that's what I'm gonna be talking about in this video. However, if you're looking at this camera for photography um, or just regular video or something like that, I do have a video I made a few years back on my main channel, which I'll link down in the description of this one. And in that video, I talk more about just the standard use of this camera. So I'd recommend checking that out. But in this video, I'm gonna talk about why I repurchased this camera because I've owned this quite a few times actually over the past few years. But the reason I purchased it in 2022 is to test out Magic Lantern and really get some good use out of that and maybe make a full review of it with Magic Lantern and talk about shooting a raw video with this budget of a camera. So before I get into it, I'd really appreciate it if you went down, hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. And if you didn't already know, this is actually my second channel. This is where I make more casual videos just talking to you guys. But on my main channel, I make more in-depth reviews, which I'll probably be doing a bunch of in-depth videos about this and shooting raw video and using Magic Lantern with the Canon EOS M. But anyways, you can pick up the EOS M for under $200 used. And in some cases, you can even get it for way cheaper than that. I actually found this one on eBay. It was listed with an SD card issue where sometimes it would show an error when trying to record. I picked it up for $60. It was in good condition, so I figured I'd just go for it and see if there's any way I could fix it. Got it here, cleaned it up real good, blew out the SD card slot with an air duster, inserted an SD card in and out like a bunch of times in a row, and I haven't had a single issue with it since. So I got a fully working, pretty good condition EOS M for $60 to shoot 14-bit raw video with. And so kind of going into that raw video, you can get Magic Lantern, which is pretty much a firmware hack you can put in the SD card. You can load it up into this camera and it basically adds a bunch of features that this camera doesn't originally have. And that's not just to do with raw video either or even video in general. A lot of people do use this for photography because it adds things like focus peaking and focus zoom and better histograms and waveforms and overall like more in-depth features for even photography if you don't want to do any sort of crazy raw video shooting or anything like that. A lot of people use this just for those added features for photography or even just for standard video if you want to just shoot the regular 1080p 24 frame a second internal video. You can still use Magic Lantern to get those added features like focus peaking, waveforms, zebras, stuff like that that this camera just doesn't have internally. And of course there's countless other features this firmware hack will enable that I haven't mentioned so even if you don't want to shoot raw video because that is a pretty in-depth workflow, you can still download this firmware hack and basically get a bunch of extra features that will really help you with recording video with this camera. Now if you're really interested in Magic Lantern, I would definitely recommend checking out Zeke. He's a YouTuber that pretty much specializes in the Canon EOS M and basically Magic Lantern in general. He has countless amounts of videos talking about it, the best settings, all the features of it, how to install it and stuff like that. So I'm going to link him down in the description as well. I'd really recommend checking out his channel if you're interested in this. And also one more thing, this is a firmware hack. It is not supported by Canon and there is possibly abilities if you install it wrong or really in any case that you could destroy your camera basically brick the camera in general so that you can't even load a software on there it's a little bit scary because you're literally loading a different software onto the camera which is obviously not intended to happen however if you follow directions directly and really don't go off track um, there's a pretty good chance it's gonna work out flawlessly but definitely keep that in mind there is a very small chance, but still a chance that you could just break your camera and totally destroy it. Either way, I kind of built out a little rig here. I picked up this small rig cage, which I'll link in the description as well. And I threw on this Tokina 28 to 70 lens here. This lens is kind of considered the poor man's Anjanu. I don't know if I said that right, but Anjanu is a really high quality cinema lens manufacturer and Tokina kind of used the same design. They worked with them. And so this is a pretty well-known lens for, you know, video and stuff like that. It's a 28 to 70 f2.6 to f2.8 lens, and it really just creates great looking photos and videos. But that's not really what we're talking about in this. Um, but this is kind of the setup I have here. And I recorded some footage with this in 14-bit raw, 1080p, 24 frames a second. And just right off the bat, this camera is pretty impressive. I can bring it into this MLV software that you use to pretty much transcode the raw into a more usable format. I exported it in Sony S-Log3 in ProRes 422HQ so I can edit it in Final Cut Pro and color grade it. And once I color grade it, kind of do some maybe noise reduction because it's a little bit noisy. This footage is pretty impressive. And the main thing I want to get by to you in this video 
is if you're looking at getting this camera and shooting a Magic Lantern video, I can really only recommend doing this for a few things. Now, obviously, you can do whatever you want. If this workflow works for you and you get used to it, you get to know everything really well, Obviously you can do whatever you want with this. It records good quality video. However, I can't recommend this for any sort of running gun work. Like for example, filming weddings or like documentary work where pretty much you're filming something that is gonna happen once and you can't really control what happens and what you're recording. You know, like event work even, just anything that you're documenting what's happening but you can't really control what's going on and you can't say, hey, can you actually do that again? Can you redo that? Can you go back there and you know, do that again. If you're doing something where you can't repeat shots and control everything directly, I 100% just can't recommend this. It's a little bit finicky. I've had some issues with the recording stopping or skipping frames, or even just little issues that I couldn't figure out at the time, but I had to kind of look back, rewind, take a look at it, and then figure it out afterwards. This software is so in-depth and there's so many little finicky options that I personally just wouldn't feel comfortable using this in any situation that I just mentioned, because there's a really high probability you're gonna miss the shot, you're not gonna be able to start recording in time, you're gonna have to dive into the menu real quick to change something, and if you miss one of those shots then it's just over you can't go back and get it however if you're shooting narrative work or short films where you can redo a shot and you can fix the lighting or fix whatever you need go back and just redo it a bunch of different times or however many times you need to get it right this camera is perfect for that if you're on this low of a budget obviously this is the cheapest camera you can get that shoots raw video now of course it's not meant to shoot raw video and it's not supported by it or really like you know, built-in internal, like a Blackmagic Pocket 4K or something like that. But if you have like a $200 budget and you want to shoot short films or narrative work where you really want that raw format to really go in-depth with color grading and post, or really just have the most flexibility possible to get a good looking image, this camera is amazing for that. And like I said, this is the cheapest possible camera you can get that can shoot a raw video. And so that's pretty much my first impressions with this. That's why I bought this camera in 2022. Like I said, I'll be doing more videos about this on my main channel. Go subscribe to that. Also, if if you enjoyed this video, go down hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. But at the end of the day, this camera shoots 14-bit raw video at a $200 or less price point. There's just no other camera that can do that. But either way, that wraps this video up. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.